just when you thought wine couldn't get any more complicated, I'm here to tell you that that Napa Cab you're drinking might not be 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. In fact, it might not be 100% Napa Valley in origin either. But worst of all, it might not be 100% wine in your bottle. Here to explain what skullduggery is afoot is Malik Amrani. He's the founder and winemaker of The Vice Wine, which is all about making honest wine from honest grapes sourced from one of the world's most beloved terroirs, Napa Valley. So if you're ready, let's uncover the story behind the swindle. All right, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right, so Malik, what many wine drinkers don't know is that when they buy a Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley or from any ABA or American viticultural area, is that the wine in the bottle doesn't necessarily come purely from Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. So my first question is, what else is in my wine if not Cab? Yeah, by law, all you have to be to be a Cabernet on a label or any other varietal, all you have to be 75%. The other 25% can be any other varietals. Although some winemakers will reach for concentrates and other additives, chemicals and things like that. Um, but yeah, all you have to be 75%. So all it takes. That's crazy. So the obvious next question is why are winemakers adding other grape varietals to their supposedly single varietal wines? Yeah, uh, many reasons. So, uh, you know, you asked me about Cabernet, but when you look at a grape like Cabernet, it's really not a very aromatic grape. So as a winemaker, you will reach for other varietals to add into the blend, to add more flavor or spice. It's almost like you're cooking. You know, when you're cooking, you have the main um, dish, the main yeah. meal, I guess. And then you have all these, the spice and then the vegetables and all the things that go along with it. It's the same thing here. Um, a lot of winemakers will absolutely add, you know, they will take advantage of that 25% to spice up their wine. Mm -hmm. um, and um, another reason can be reducing cost. You know, if you're dealing with a varietal like Pinot Noir, uh, that is very expensive varietal to grow and uh, produce, you know, it, it kind of helps it to add uh, a less expensive varietal into the blend because 25% is quite significant. Quite a bit of cost savings there, yeah. yeah. Um, so why would winemakers want to source grapes from outside of Napa Valley if this region is so beloved for its great terroir, particularly for grape varietals like Cabernet Sauvignon? Um, why, again, cost-wise, um, mm -hmm. to be Napa Valley on the label, by law, all you have to be is 85%. Um, the other 15% can come from anywhere. Mm -hmm. So... Um, again, if, uh, if a winemaker is reaching for another varietal uh, rather than Cabernet, for example, let's say they get in a Merlot, they want to add the Merlot into the blend, um, it'll probably be even better to add Merlot from another region because it's going to cost you a lot less than Napa to add it into the blend. Um, so most of the time, I will say it's because of cost. Mm. Um, and um, when, when, when you're a small producer like the Weiss wine, you know, that 15% margin really doesn't save you a lot. It doesn't save you much. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do any of that. But um, if if we were making millions of cases, millions of bottles, then 15% is quite significant. It really adds up. Right. Um, so I have a hard time imagining the winemakers of Burgundy, France, add anything other than Pinot Noir or Chardonnay to their wines. So is this practice unique to the United States or is it done elsewhere in the world? Yeah, it's done elsewhere in the world. Every country is different. And every region sometimes, even within France, uh, has their own laws and uh, uh, they have their own laws. When you look at Burgundy, by law, you really only have Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Yeah, there's a little bit of Aligoté and Gamay, but uh, we, we really don't talk about that. The main two varietals are Pinot and Chard. And mm -hmm. if I go to Burgundy and try to grow Cabernet and Burgundy, I'll probably go to jail. Um, they're, they're very, very strict. <laughs> um, you know, other parts of the world, uh, the laws are very different. Some people, some, some countries, they may have up to 70% to be a varietal wine. Um, and uh, very few other countries will be 100% varietal to be mm. a varietal wine. Wow. Okay, well, here's the big question. Why aren't wine labels legally required to tell us what's in the wine we're drinking? Ah, that is a big question. Um, um, you know, uh, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but probably has to do with uh, the 
the a lot of the wine sales are most of the wine sales are probably driven especially like country like United States are driven by the big companies mm -hmm. and the big companies will not want you to know um, what's in the wine especially when you're making millions of cases again you're not really crafting wine when you're making so much so many cases there's there is a little craft but there's not really craft you you're not making wine you're making formula wine uh, wine that actually goes into these massive tanks um, and then everything is um, it's lab wine everything is uh, you know it's chemistry you add in other varietals you add in chemicals you add in all these things um, so the reason why I believe um, we keep asking for it we are small producers all across the United States we've been pushing actually the the federal government to actually put more regulation uh, so the consumer will be able to find out how much uh, uh, if there is maybe sugar in the wine or if there is a residual sugar in the wine if anything is added but they keep denying it every single year it actually was just uh, denied recently less than six weeks ago the new wow. request uh, mm -hmm. other countries are catching up i think the uk they started to include in nutritional facts but I, I'm very confident here in the United States, a matter of time until uh, until we catch up to the rest of the world. Right, yeah. So I love that you just held up your little your little can of wine there, but I was gonna mention that there is a particular brand of wine that makes single varietal wines using grapes sourced strictly from Napa Valley. And if it says cab on the bottle, there's 100% cab in the bottle and it is your brand, the Vice Wine. So tell me what motivated you to sidestep these questionable yet profitable practices in your winemaking? Um, well, purity, you know, when to us, if we're offering Cabernet, we want you to have 100% Cabernet. We want you to know what Cabernet tastes like. And, you know, it's pr probably not really relevant for Cab. It's more relevant for other varietals like Pinot Noir. Nowadays, you really don't find, I mean, it still exists, but a lot of, a lot of producers are adding other things to Pinot Noir. And, you know, Pinot Noir is a very delicate grape. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, the wine consumer is getting confused now to what Pinot Noir even is supposed to taste like, because Pinot Noir is never supposed to be very dark in color and rich and jammy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not Pinot unless you're blending it. So why do we choose to be 100% varietal? Um, honest pra practice and just being able to offer 100% uh, varietal wine from 100% single vineyard. For example, uh, uh, one of the wines actually come from this vineyard, Carneros Cabernet, and uh, you you're guaranteed to have 100% single vineyard uh, wine, 100% Cabernet. So there's no uh, blending, there's nothing added, nothing stripped out of it. Beautiful. Um, and tell me finally where people can, who's watching this video, where they can find it, get their hands on a bottle or case of the Vice wine. Yeah, uh, we are across retailers in uh, certain states in the United States, but thevice.com, you'll find uh, all our current vices. We, uh, we offer uh, club memberships and uh, we have different varietals. We have many, many varietals. Uh, some of them are very, very unusual to Napa Valley and California, and um, we are able to offer them on our website on thevice.com, T-H-E-V-I-C-E.com. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. I know it is a major frustration to wine professionals and certain winemakers that there are these somewhat dubious practices going on. So I'm hopeful that we've created some awareness that will translate into a demand for more honest winemaking and labeling practices in the future. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you, Theo. Well, there's some important food for thought straight from the winemaker's mouth. And if you prefer your wine without a cider swindle or sugar, you should check out thevicewine.com and order yourself a case of wines that are not only a pure and honest expression of their grape varietals, but also of the world famous Napa Valley in California. I also really encourage you to check out Brainscape's Wine Academy, where you'll discover a library of super helpful wine guides for people of all experience levels. And if you're interested in taking your knowledge to professional heights with a WSET or CMS qualification, get the Brainscape web and mobile app to help you learn about wine really efficiently. Alternatively, you can just use Brainscape to keep track of your wine adventures by making your own flashcards. Finally, don't forget to watch and like the other videos we have on the Brainscape Wine channel and subscribe to get notified when a new video drops. And that's it. 
between the Brainscape app, our Wine Academy, and the thousands of other subjects you can study efficiently on our platform, you've got the learning tools you need to rise to any challenge. <laughs>